What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here, and today I wanted to do a midterm review on a shifter, a Sim Magic uh, SQ shifter. This is a sequential shifter. Uh, it's already on my website as far as the review goes of the sequential shifter. A really impressive shifter. Love it <clears throat> as far as the uh, action and the feel and the positive uh, feedback it gives you. It's probably one of the most immersive shifters I've, I've used. In all time so but you know uh, it's time to give a update on <clears throat> on the long-term review of this and uh yeah get into it from here so uh with that said let's jump into it All right, Sim Racer. So now we're looking at the Sim Magic Q1 shifter, as you can see that I have here apart with another problem. But let me get into give you a little bit of history of this Sim Magic. So I bought this in November, so it is exactly well, a little over six months old now. November 23, that is. And uh, it's been actually form, function, and fit is awesome on this shifter. <clears throat> I love the additional display, even though you know the neutral really doesn't work besides you just zeroing out your neutral button here but other than that i, I can live with that <laughs> but uh <clears throat> the form of it as, how, as far as how it sits on your rig is is really good because you just got you know, three different screw holes on each side that you can use on your 8020 <clears throat> or any other kind of bracket system and mount it to which is awesome and then of course the height wise as far as from where you have from the rig up to the handle length is really good so i'm really enjoying um most of the aspects of the shifter <clears throat> however uh in, in the term of using this shifter i've ran across several problems and i think there are some inherent design issues with this shifter that some magic will hopefully they're seeing this video i'll show it to the uh I'll post it in my repair, uh, the, one of the tickets that I have, I'll post a review so that way they get it. But anyway, uh, during this time, as you know, I've already had a claim. If you don't know, I'll uh, rewind for you. I had a claim where the spring, there's two springs. So there's a, uh, underneath this little chuck here and this one here, uh, there is a, uh, a spring underneath it, right? And there has actually a little C-clip that holds holds this up in there and the spring of course makes this action springy hence the spring right <clears throat> so what happens is that from vibration or, or uh, just use this the spring will work its way out the bottom of this plate here and uh, what happens then and it comes it starts uncoiling out the bottom so I'll show some pictures of this uh, example as well on the screen so Easy enough, you know, you just uh, pull this screw out, cool it back up it, and slide it back up in there, bend the spring back as good as you can, and then replace the screw and, and be done with it, right? <clears throat> and that fixes it, generally. And and I've actually had that issue several times with this, and so since I've been told how to fix it, because you didn't really want to take apart a brand new part, right, when I first got it, just in case there was a uh, faulty warranty claim, you know, if I take it apart, but uh, now that I've already dug into it through uh, three different tickets uh, for warranty issues, it's fine for me to just go ahead and do it, I feel. So I've been uh, unscrewing this and then uh, sliding it back in there. Uh, inherently, what ends up being a problem is that, like I said, that it uncools itself. So this doesn't set exactly flush against the face that it's in here. Uh, it's pretty tight, but you can see it actually, well, I don't know if you can see it, in the, but it has a slight bend to it. So when you're torquing down this bolt, which, you know, a couple, a couple foot pounds, uh, maybe this plate's just so thin and, and weak that it, it bends it and it bends up here on the, on the ends, but it definitely looks a little bit more, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it seems like it's a little bit more proud here on the ends than it is in the center. But it may just be my eyes messing with me. But either way, the inherent problem is that it'll work itself loose. Now, I think that is caused by a couple of actions. For one, using the shifter, eventually vibration of this action is going to work that spring loose. And then two, uh, vibrations on the rig, like from uh, transducers and stuff. So I have a motion rig, which uh, shakes the rig pretty good. And so I think those subtle vibrations will help uh, do this as well. I think for a fix for us 
people that use transducers, which I think should be thought of before you produce a product like this anyways, uh, is, uh, is vibrations because a lot of people have transducers nowadays is, uh, maybe put a damper plate here. So I think next go around shifters, I'll put a little rubber damper on the bottom of this plate to help isolate it from some of the vibrations. That'll be my quick fix for next round. But, uh, until then let's see if we can get this thing fixed still. So, uh, in the process, when that cool spring uh, broke out for me, I had uh, asked for some new ones to replace it, and it took several months. Let's see, I asked it in November. I got it in uh, February, and <laughs> so several months, and uh, so that's one of the, uh, another issue that comes to mind. So Simagic is all over the world, and, and they got distributors all over the world, but I, I find an inherent problem with them because they apparently don't carry spare parts. And even though it seems like a very simple item to repair, a lot of these shops don't have the spare parts. So they have to wait for them to come from China, which is another inherent problem because then you got it coming over the boat or, or by flight, right? And so you got a uh, three cent part holding up a customer, um, which is unfortunate. So that's another inherent problem with, with working with uh, out of the country companies yes there is a lot of distributors however they're not equipped they're they're not their qrcs of these distributors are not equipped with uh handling repairs and if they are they have to actually get approval to repair it before they actually repair it so when i go back to the shop to ask for hey, i need to get this fixed they tell me go to discord fill out a ticket and they'll handle it from there and then when the send magic qc guy uh, comes up with a solution. He'll ship the repair, uh, repair items or give the shop the go ahead to replace the, sh the shifter, right? That's how it works. So now six months after owning this, I've had uh, several times where I had to retighten it. Okay, that's easy enough to fix, but still a little bit of pain. And then one of the times uh, the C-clip that holds these pins up had broke. So I, I'll pop a picture up here uh, for you to see. Now, since I was waiting, since I didn't get my spring replacement until February, like I mentioned earlier, uh, they were going, they went ahead and sent me the C-clips too, because I had at that time said, hey, where's my order for my replacement spring? Oh, okay, it's on the way now. Um, I said, okay, by the way, go ahead and send me a C-clips. So they did, no big deal. I didn't have to go through a ticket for that or anything like that. That part was easy peasy. So I appreciated that. Now, the uh, third ticket now I have on this is, is same same problem uh it it stays stuck in position forward or backwards it doesn't return back so i of course addressed the uh the shop again to get it repaired the sim shop actually to get it repaired and they say fill out a ticket which is the normal protocol i fill out a ticket and then the guy says you know hey take this screw here and loosen it up i'm like okay at first before i replied back i told him because uh, initially last year, when I had this issue with it sticking, they said, unscrew these two bolts, which I have in a video already for y'all, probably already seen. But uh, unscrew these two bolts, then it'll loosen up some tension, so this will spring back to center, right? Okay, well, I went ahead and told him, heck, I already did this fix, it didn't fix anything. So his reply back, or the tech guy's reply back, was to unscrew this, slightly unscrew this bolt a little bit, pull the tension off of it, uh, so it'll return back to center. I did that. Now, keep in mind, these guys know possibly several scenarios that it could be, right? I didn't like that they only sent me one scenario considering that we have like 24 hour delay to communicate back and forth each other. So that's another problem with uh, repair centers here. They take too long to respond back to you. So now, you know, 48 hours, I guess is probably acceptable, but don't send me a a one-line reply, unscrew this, when you more than likely are just trying to pacify me until you figure out something else or you just really don't have time to mess with it. Um, that I didn't like. So another tick against Sim Magic, in my opinion. Um, now, I, I, getting tired of waiting, I went ahead and like, well, I'm just gonna take this thing apart and look at it. So took it apart, found the problem. The problem is in here, if we can see, this little stamped bent L bracket here has a tang, oops, right there, that little piece right there on top of the spring. See if we can see it right there. 
and get a light. All right, right there. So that little flat tang is a part of this L bracket, right? So that broke off. So when you actually use it, as you can see, my fingers out of the way here, forward and backwards, you're not in contact. Let's see if we can get that in camera. Yeah, you're not in contact with it, right? So they disconnected. You can see where it broke off as well. So it broke off in there, and that's actually inherently the problem, right? So it doesn't move. So what this actually works is that, obviously, like you just saw when I move the handle, that tab is going to push against this other stamp piece of metal uh, in tension against the spring. And then the spring, when you let go of the rod, the spring will bring this back to center. And the same for the opposite side, right? Again, it'll bring it back to center. This tab on this side will bring it back to center. And inside here, you'll see that it has a black tab right here that sticks out that keeps these from over traveling. So it's a clever design, actually. I like the design on it, so fairly clever. Uh, but the problem is they're using weak materials here. So they got a, a weak stamped piece of, of metal here, whatever it's made out of. And uh, yeah, it's inherently, this is gonna be a problem. So anytime you design a part for production, you inherently design a weak point in your, in your product on purpose. And you put it somewhere, hopefully outside of the part are the easiest point to replace it, right? So in other words, if this becomes a problem binding up, which I'm sure through testing, they've figured that out, this is, becomes a problem binding up, uh, where, where are your weak points, right? Well, usually I would imagine the weak point that they assess for us would be the ball, the little, uh, it's not a, I don't think it's a ceramic ball, but the little ball in there uh, for the detents here should shatter because they give you two extra ones and they give you an extra spring i think in there as well uh, that should be the fail safe that should be the part so if you got any binding you should shatter that little that little ball i doubt it's ceramic because ceramic uh, ceramic is extremely strong as far as uh impacts go uh but they're horrible in sheer but uh this is more of an impact so this would i wouldn't think it would be a ceramic ball but whatever it is that never broke. <laughs> what broke was you yielded, uh, sheared this uh, tab off. I'll get back in that position. We sheared this tab right here. So not a big deal. Uh, just need to get another piece here and uh, install it. There's a couple screws in there that you can unscrew. Of course, I have to take off this plate to get to it and reinstall it. I think it was a design improvement. Just thinking about it, they should probably just use a pin, like a 316 dowel pin all the way through. And, uh, that, of course, would hit against these two sleeves or these two little uh, flat pieces of metal to recenter itself, right? And uh, you'd never really, you would never shear that, say, 316 uh, pin, right? That's just like these rollers pins here they have. Well, here's roller bearings, and then they got this pin here. It's a hollowed out pin, but even so, if they use this, uh, that would have worked as well. And because um, you're... <laughs> 316, you got a 30 KSI yield on it, so you're not gonna ever shear that. What's gonna happen is you're gonna bend these tabs here on itself, or you're gonna hopefully break the ball over there. So you're gonna have broken balls <laughs> on this. So if you design it right, uh, you'll put your, 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 uh, your stress riser going back to this ball and uh, crack the ball, and then it would spin freely in here because that would be in pieces, right? Instead of having to dig into the design and do a full tear down to get to this one part. So anyway, it is what it is. Uh, that is what I found. And so this has of course been six months of use of this product and it's, you know, when it works, awesome. I can't fault it for that when it works. When it works, it's amazing. It feels really good, very tactile feeling. The reason I got it was because it resembled the Quaif shifter and uh, which was, uh, extremely robust from what I understand as well. This one, not so robust, but I think there's some design improvements that they can do here uh, to improve the design. I understand that this is already an improvement from the previous design that they had problems with, so they already know there's some issues going on, but this quite doesn't fix the problem. So you can't, comments will say, well, you shouldn't tighten this all the way up. I would disagree with you, uh, just simply because don't give me the option if it can't handle it. And obviously it's pretty simple. 
if you design, if you tighten this up too much, right in there, you won't be able to move the shifter itself. It just won't shift. So you have to back it out a few turns uh, to where you make it shift. So if you inherently can't handle the torque that you put on this, which is easy to figure out, put a stop, put a positive stop in this uh, to where it doesn't go anymore. And then you never have that problem. So there's three fixes for you. That would be uh, easy to do to eliminate headaches uh, for the customer and obviously for uh, the people doing the repairs. But anyway, that is what it is. Wanted to give my opinions on this. Other than that, other than the design errors that we have here uh, with this product, it's been a pretty fun product to use. But I cannot, and this is probably the first time I ever said it, I cannot recommend the Sim Magic Q1 for uh for people because it just you know i have too many problems with it within just six months of use so normally i don't have to do repair uh, long-term reviews until at least a year because just nothing ever goes wrong with a lot of these things so anyway it's a little bit of a uh busy product uh in here with everything that's going on so you know inherently some things will creep up and uh it seems like we're the product tester on these so yeah, uh, leave some comments below, you know, what you have any problems with yours or uh, if everything's easy peasy lemon squeezies for you, you know. So if it is, I hope so, because that's awesome, because I really like using the shifter. So I hope to get at least a replaceable part or a replaceable shifter. Honestly, they should just send me a shifter because my engineering time is expensive. I should be charging these guys to do this. I am a mechanical engineer myself, so... Yeah, this is super easy design and it's easy to figure out where the flaws are. But yeah, they should just go ahead and send me a new one. Then uh, hopefully they'll repair this in the future for other for other people. So, all right, that is it from my side. A little bit of a discussion here about the Sim Magic Q1 shifter. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. And leave some comments, leave nice comments, talk nicely to people. And uh, we'll see you on the track. I'm out.